For the second straight year, the Florida Panthers sweep their preseason doubleheader against the Nashville Predators. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Monday, September 23rd edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. If you follow me on X at Monoman12, follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, you can do that all at FanDuel.com to get started. So the Florida Panthers were back in action on Sunday afternoon uh, in front of 8,076 people in attendance on a football Sunday, which honestly... The Florida Panthers in their two games of the doubleheader. That was the best thing to watch on TV. If you are a South Florida sports fan and you love all the teams and you just stick to South Florida sports, that was the best thing on all afternoon as the Florida Panthers took care of both uh, games in this doubleheader. The first one by a score of three to two, and then the second one by a final score of six to two. So an aggregate of nine to four that the Florida Panthers did win both games in. And also the Panthers playing, we didn't start the fire once again in the locker room after the game, even with Brandon Montour being gone uh, too. So even though there is a new locker room DJ for the Cats, the the traditions still remain the same for them. But as far as the first uh, game of this uh, doubleheader, as far as the lineup goes, you saw the second line of Bennett, Rodriguez Kachuk in there, along with the third line, minus Mackie Semeskevich, who's going to be competing in that spot. San, um, Sanders Vilmanis, as we mentioned on the last show, is in that spot, and Mackie Semeskevich will have an opportunity to get on the ice uh, more, more than likely when the Panthers do return uh, to action, which we'll discuss more later in the show of when th- that would be. And obviously the the D, D pairings in, in a little bit of a mix, but nothing that is set in stone as some youngsters will be go um, be, be paired with veterans on, on that, like Brian for with Ekblad, Belinskis with Schmidt and Mikola with Havorka. Uh, so also for the, the Panthers about what in this game with the Preds spending a lot of time in their, in the Panthers zone, the, the Panthers were still, forcing them to the outside, get, giving Spencer Knight a lot of time to at least uh, see the pucks too for, for, for them in, in, in this contest where Spencer Knight went 19 of 19 of this. But also the in both games, just, but not to get too ahead of ourselves, uh, the, both the units, uh, both top units were the ones to score in, in, in this one. And we'll talk more about the second one later. But in the first one, it was the, fir- it, it was the second line normally, but the first line in this one of the Kachuk uh, – Kachuk Bennett and Rodriguez line. They they get the first one on a on uh, on the puck that was around the corner, protecting it, using the backhand, and Bennett driving right before he could bring it to his forehand. He puts a shot on on net, and then and then the Panthers go up one nothing there. But also for the young y- young guys for the the Panthers here, we spoke about the junior guys and Grayson Soch and, and uh, Hunter St. Martin, who are going to be going back to junior after this game. Uh, really strong on the forecheck, creating opportunities, separating the puck. And then without hesitation, Hunter St. Martin with the quick decision and going and making the score uh, two to nothing at, fi- at 544 too. And also uh, the some of uh, a little bit of guys of pro, pro hockey experience, one who was overseas in Oliver Akuliar and Rasmus Asplund also uh, combined for a goal, but also where they, the Florida Panther way of getting it deep, fighting it off, and then and then getting that loose puck on a quick tap, like we spoke about quick decisions for Hunter St. Martin after the after the four check from Sachin. It was the same thing on this dump in on this quick chip or, around for this this line for Rasmus Asplund on on the finish uh, there for him. The PK unit for the Panthers here, maybe maybe with Kevin Stenlin gone, we're going to see a little bit of reunion with Lundell and Lusterinen. We know that those guys 
even though Barkoff and Reinhardt are together normally, and Lusto had a little bit of time with Kevin Stenlin, there's there's a chance that not only that that Lusto can get another opportunity with another Panther uh, who who will get to them in a minute, who unfortunately went down, but also will get the opportunity to be with uh, Anton Lindell too on that on that shorthand on that shorthanded unit for for the for the season and they also got a, got an opportunity going up the other way and create um and almost getting a, a goal for on 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 the pk also for the power play unit for for the panthers there the kachuk ran a lot of the of the of the point a little bit which we saw more of versus him being down low which we saw a lot of why his Shots per game were, were down a lot of because of that change, especially on special teams. And we spoke even years ago about Ekblad and when he was on the power play about firing off those one timers from the le- left circle. And there was a lot of and there was a lot of, of few times of that on, on the, in this game. And Schmidt uh, running running the left point, him being the the left handed shot for him. So a, a few different looks get and and then quick taps to get. To, to to that left flank and then also creating opportunities uh there off off rebounds where we saw an early one from evan rodriguez unfortunately did not did not cash in on on that part of special teams but little you know it and it's gonna happen for for a unit that's not together often and that won't be uh because because they had a too many men penalty uh just with 50 seconds left on the on the power play too there so th- those are going to happen in in the cases of when you when you're not together o- often for 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 this group too but again you 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 saw the you saw the them stay still be in their structure and opportunistic too as the goals for the national predators in game one of this one did not go did did not go through until the latter parts of the game and for the Panthers very very controlled very poised in, in this one too as they as they came out with this win for for them in game one so we're we're gonna transition over to segment number two where we are going to discuss more about the second game of this split squad double header between the two teams we're going to discuss that and more next here on the locked on Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. And Prize Picks is the easiest, most exciting day to, way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less two to six players' stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss the deal on Price Picks because it's gone when September ends. Price Picks puts their numbers first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my pick hits, I know I can get my money as quick as 15 minutes. And you can download the Price Picks app today and use code LockedOnNHL to get $50 instantly when you pay $5. That's code LockedOnNHL on Price Picks to get $50 instantly when you play Five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Price picks. Run your game. Also, this episode is brought to you by Indeed, and we're driven for the search for better. When it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. This is a busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according, according to a recent Indeed survey. You can leverage over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. Indeed's matching engine constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. And listen to the show can get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your job more visibility at Indeed.com. Indeed.com slash locked on. Once again, indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And once again, I'd like to thank you guys for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Monday. Now, talking about the 
second game of this doubleheader where you saw more of the top line for the Florida Panthers and them getting getting and controlling play early. Uh, obviously, more of a veteran group for, for this one, more of the guys who have spent a little bit of time in pro hockey, even some of the younger guys who have had their ELC sign and they've had so, a little bit of time in Charlotte and even some of the journeymen who, who have gone from team to team too. So this was more of the experience group for the the Panthers as the like I said the, the top line was get ripping the puck early drop drew a power, a, a power play early and this uh, the unit for the power play one for game two uh, for Hagee Barkoff both both Quisk brothers and Reinhardt we don't have a dif differentiation of the jerseys yet so start memorizing the jerseys uh, numbers for these two both Quisk brothers as they're looking to be the fourth uh, pair of brothers to ever suit up in a panthers game uh going back to this 30 year history of the panthers also we did see a brothers on the other side for the national predators throughout this doubleheader in ryan o'reilly and cal o'reilly for for them so the the power play especially was very crisp lots of movement very, mid to low pass to get it from barkoff to reinhardt to make it one nothing at 436 also josh davies with a quick uh mid-range shot with a screen from Patrick Giles, uh, too, and then a tip from Jesper Boquist to Adam Boquist. The, Adam Boquist spoke about uh, after the game how th there's not a lot of opportunities, and this we did that they did not envision it very early for them to be together on on the ice. So great to see that. I don't know during the regular season if they are going to get that opportunity on the power play to score. Maybe it's a situation where it's a blowout and and something like last year uh, against the Buffalo Sabres where it's already three, nothing. And with a minute left, you get your so-called power play three on, on the ice. And then, um, and then the team scores, I'm talking the example of the Lomberg uh, goal where he's just skating around the bench uh, with his arms up uh, across the, when, when, as he's skating to, uh, back to the Panthers bench and passing by the Sabres bench. So don't know if we are going to, see much of that with the Bocas brothers on at least on the man advantage uh for for the Panthers too but three power play goals in the in the first period for uh the Panthers Th something you like to see on the, on that unit there too and also although can play wasn't really con um controlled as much in the first game for the Panthers here the the Panthers and their ability to get through the the first period only allowing five, even though they did allow a goal on the third shot of the game, you saw a little bit of signs of the postseason for the for this team as far as keeping keep once again keep keeping it to the outside and also giving them time. And that's a lot of what we saw in the first one too, except except not as many shots as Sergey Bobrovsky was uh, re resting uh, too, and a, a even we saw Bobby Chance going once again on a stop by Tommy Novak just before he came out in the mid mid midway point, and also Chris Streeger coming into this game when he did can't come into it uh, under duress uh, very very quick when 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 the goalie switch was happening, but for the Panthers here, Tom um, Tomash Noshak. Uh, had, had, was tripped and then hit his head on the ice got to be evaluated too uh in, in this one uh, also Jonah Gajovic also making his uh, presence felt going into th this one with uh with two fights Dmitry Kulikov getting into one of them getting involved and then getting a misconduct unfortunately that uh Kulikov Alsher pairing is a little bit uh lackadaisical uh, to put it nicely there uh, a little bit behind, a little out of control with their sticks. Uh, the not keeping up with the predator speed there too. But with Kulikov, he's not. He's not. It's it's not a partner that he plays with a lot. So Alsher still has a little bit of time to develop. He's going to be playing some time in the AHL this season in Charlotte. So a little bit of getting his game going. Also, Alsher got into a fight in this one uh, too. So so that that there, there's that for the the big uh, check uh, def defenseman for uh, the Panthers. But the only goal that Chris Strieger, though, uh, gave up was on, on the, on the power play uh, for, for the, for the Florida Panthers. And that was off of uh, Steven Stamkos is a one-timer, something that I know Panther fans are pretty used to uh, from his days in uh, Tampa Bay. 
And also, yeah, Adam Boquist spoke about really his time uh, on manning a power play, speaking about some guys that he spoke, uh, he's played with, and guys like Johnny Gaudreau, Patrick, um, Patrick Kane, <laughs> almost said Patrick Giles, uh, but getting getting the puck to the still skill guys and knowing when to 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 get it to the flanks knowing that those are prime shooting spots for for them too for for it and knowing knowing that when a lane is open that you could get a tip in there uh, and just you know once again Bokus is a young guy who still doesn't we don't have a full picture of what he could become and obviously when you're going through two be rebuilding situations obviously with the florida panthers and their program they have even if it's not an eight-year deal contract like we saw from gustav warzing you've seen guys become from chances of not being on an nhl roster period to even being a spot having a spot as a seventh defenseman and playing some playoff games in the example of josh mahura a, a guy that they once again got from waivers back just a few years ago from the anaheim ducks and he was your on a third pair defenseman on a team that was an ac that made the stanley cup final so the uh, but with boquist when you get that opportunity as a signing and you know that the top 10 pick pedigree is, is uh there for him the floor is a lot higher for him than it ever <laughs> is for for josh mahara so and, and getting that consistently on the cheap for a winning program uh, in in the Florida Panthers, you th there there is an opportunity that the that the power play could still keep afloat. Once again, like I spoke about a few weeks ago about the defense, we we think they'll be fine on their end with the amount of block shots per game, like that we talk about with Boquist and Nate Schmidt. But there there there's going to be some time and. N for for them to all gel together too here but for for also the the some of the youngsters going back to some of the young guys here uh like a josh davies and a Patrick giles uh and just uh just really about finding finding one another and also with davies coming into his uh first full season in ahl charlotte working with a guy like like patrick giles uh they they are one guy who knows what the system is and also remember patrick giles is when he originally signed his elc was just after a d camp and after a rookie showcase too for him too so the, so this is a, around the time where where all, also young guys themselves like davies you get you can take a little bit of a look on what what kind of a midseason call up he could be in the, in the case of an injury situation? Because although Josh Davies played a great game, three shots, four hits uh, for him, that that is the physicality that you want out of your bottom guys. Like I said in the last episode, the focus on those bottom bottom six guys is to just create hone in on their defensive game and 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 score when it's opportunistic for them, which is somewhere around the lines that I see Josh Davies as the guy who, who is going to intimidate the opposition to we, we, we see it in the older guy in Jonah Gadjevich, like we mentioned earlier, but a guy who was off the puck, um, um, who creates on, on the four check once again for, for the Panthers real is one that you could possibly see as, as maybe a guy who get, who gets uh, called up for, the Panthers later on this season. Who know who knows uh for them. But we are going to transition to segment number three, where we are going to discuss more of the injury to Tom Tomash Noshak and also what a, a quote that Paul Marie spoke about in after the games about sticking with the program and what does that mean? And is he tipping his hand to what where Spencer Knight could be? We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats. 
view live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you can place your bets and you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet you once again you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guarantee when you place a your first five dollar bet and you can do that all at fanduel.com And once again, I'd like to thank you guys all for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Monday edition of the show as we are 15 days away from opening night. Anton Lundell days away from opening night uh, as we are getting one step closer to October 8th and the banner raising uh, ceremony. And by the way, seeing the Stanley Cup on TV uh, for for everyone to see Stanley cup champions. I know the Stanley cup final uh, banners are still there, but maybe uh, George Richards of Florida hockey. Now when he posted that picture of the Stanley cup final, where it was the band, the final banner, maybe that's going to be the exact place that they will put the championship banner for the Florida Panthers there. So uh, something to look out for, uh, for placement, but that we won't see that until uh, for a while now so not not something that we uh should worry too much about as, as of right now so uh so like we used to mention earlier tomas noshek uh, a guy who was who the panthers were going to uh rely on heavily as the kevin stenlin replacement looks like looks like that it doesn't we don't know exactly how long he is going to be out for for the panthers it's something that he, the team is going to look at, at on the off day, which the off day is today, which the Paul Maurice also spoke about how the the guys are the guys and their energy levels based on Sunday's game with the three with the three days uh, for for them not necessarily putting too much stock in their performance and what they saw uh, versus what they saw in the three practices. They you will put more emphasis on that over the game. But going back to the game and the it, update on Tomas Noshek is that we 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 won't know uh and that we'll we'll know more on tuesday and also for for who is the guy who will likely go up in that place for for the panthers chances are we could see an opportunity as uh guys who were who maybe we're gonna compete for the 13th forward uh position in mckenzie entwistle likely going to be a guy who steps up if season opening ir is is the route uh, trust a guy in with hockey experience in Oliver Cooliar, who also plays a uh, center too. With uh, Entwistle, guy who's a little taller than him, um, then Noshek shoots with his right hand too. Uh, so that gives a different look for that fourth line for the Panthers. And also, with I, I know, I know what I mentioned earlier about not a lot of jobs open for the Panthers here and not a throwing too many young guys into the wolves until they're until they're ready but a guy who's already had three games on the nhl level a full season in the ahl maybe this could give room for justin sort of to possibly to possibly be part of that of the opening night lineup or even contend even more this gives an opportunity for competition more as training camp goes for him a, a guy who could play in all situations has a fast motor uh too for for him uh there so that those are also great opportunities for them. Uh, we did mention about just going into the third and final segment about teasing about if Paul Maurice really gave us any answers uh, that that we asked based on Spencer Knight and how he looked. Obviously, did not give up a, a goal in in the first game of the doubleheader going um, going perfect, but with. Maurice's comments after the game spoke about how he is a man who's sticking with the program. Uh, and listen, one, like I mentioned earlier about the, not putting too much of the game tape in, into putting so much stock into that, but looking at how they, they progressed o- over the, the period, period, long periods of time. And obviously Spencer with the thing of hovering over of contract, whether of him being a wa- waivers exempt for the for for the season still for for him, I, I with Palmer saying him sticking to the program, 
I wonder if that means that no matter what, that they're going to send them down to the AHL based on wanting to have those spots filled once again for the Panthers because chances are if he is with the team to start the season, chances are it's going to be the, um, they're, you're going to be missing a roster spot of, of 20 of having the seven guys, uh, 13, 13, um, 13 forwards, seven defensemen, and two goalies based on the cap and working it on Puck Peter. You guys could actually uh, do it yourselves. And uh, and for Spencer, that that could be that could be the situation for him, no matter what. Even though he's looked good, and also once again being patient with the approach too. Uh, Aaron Eckblad spoke about how Spencer is always a guy who who is always working in the in the gym too uh, for for him, and also. Also, continuing to just put in the work too. Also, guys who are who we won't see for likely the rest of the of the preseason. Uh, Hunter St. Martin has a good head on his shoulders, trusting the process too for uh, for him here, here and knowing that the the results will come for him if if he just continues to to work uh, to listen. And always be and always be attentive uh, to uh, spoke. Um, Aaron Ekblad spoke about a hit that he took too, and also spoke about the battles that he had with uh, Saint Martin too. So that one is an exciting one. Will that result in a possible ELC later down the line in the season, where it, where the ELC starts next season? As soon as that, who knows? Uh, based on that, first impressions are great. Uh, for for him scoring the three goals in the rookie showcase and then translating it to here, uh, chance chances are that we we could see that li- um, later on. And also, uh, Saint Martin also created an opportunity for uh, for Matt Luff before a defender closed in on him right before a scoring opportunity uh, in in that first uh, first game for him there uh, too. So also so so also that too for 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 them so chances are of, of of that but still if you have an opportunity like we said in our show with tj schlott flow hockey does have that package with ahl games along with junior hockey games so lots of opportunities to see saint martin and what he does in medicine hat later uh th- this season for 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 them too uh, i mean the best talent in the nhl when it comes to the draft comes from the WHL. That is the the best junior hockey league of, of, of all the ones in, in the CHL. So you, you are seeing, you're seeing Hunter St. Martin playing with the best of the best. And also great. Also to see <laughs> once again, how he's playing with a fellow person that is from Alberta and Grayson Sachin, and he's forever getting the jokes on being uh, an Alberta native who is playing for the Florida Panthers too. Uh, so just the, those jokes are just continuing are just going to continue going uh, St. Martin's way as long as he's a Florida Panther. Uh, so for him, so for him that he's going to, he's going to be someone who is going to be one that for, for down the line that of someone to look for. I mean, I mean, we've been propping up uh, Josh Davies uh, for a few years now. It's just now waiting on, on the opportunity for 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 him on, on the actual NHL level, so so a few a few years down the line for for Hunter St. Martin for him, so that uh so like like I said, the Panthers are going to be off today. They will be back on the ice tomorrow, where we'll get more about Thomas Noshak and whether Mackie Semeskevich will be back in the mix for the Florida Panthers as they will be getting ready prior to heading to Orlando for the neutral site game against the Tampa Bay Lightning as now we will see more of what the units are going to look like maybe do we see the de- defense pairs go back to what we expect them to be and also also we will get a sense of what power play 1 is going to look like too as now the cuts are going to be coming too a few a few waves of a few waves of them We'll, we'll be there, and now we'll get one step closer to knowing what the opening night lineup will look like for the Cats. So that's going to do it for today's show. We are going to return Wednesday. We're going to take tomorrow off uh, as I will be traveling. Uh, 
So no, no show tomorrow. And we'll be back to, with you guys on Wednesday prior and to preview Wednesday night's game between the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast. You'll be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.